Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. We are back for our ASUS Z97 event. Uh, if you watched the previous video, we went through and talked about a tons of the features, tons of features on the boards, uh, on the mainstream segments. Now we're going to go through and actually do some demonstrations of features both in the UEFI and in Windows. Yeah, a lot and of good uh, stuff. JJ's back with us, of course, and we're going to start in the UEFI. So you can see behind us we have it. You guys have a direct feed of it as well. Looks nice. Looks fantastic. Look at those animating fan icons. Dude, isn't that cool? Corner. That's Come pretty on. good. That's, that's, pretty that's good. one of the new touches. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's start here. What are we looking at? What's new? What's exciting? So um, you know the UEFI. We're actually in a really interesting take. We talked about a little bit earlier actually that we're even planning much much bigger transitions. Uh, but as of right now, we're still working on those because you know our. Uh, a lot of things that you guys really need to understand, I guess, first and foremost about the UEFI is, is that there's so much that you don't externally see. The UEFI is much more than just the graphical element. It's the, right. It is the actual firmware that drives your entire experience. And because of that, we have to be very, very careful about what we introduce because it can break. Uh, functionality. There's things like uh, auto rules and just hooks and MRC tuning and a lot of really complex things that exist in here that just when you want to change stuff it's very difficult from size limitations uh, because we need to keep uh, space available for future updates that we know are going to come down the pipe mm -hmm. um, whether it's going to be MRC updates or new CPU microcode um, you know and there's just a lot of different things to handle um, and also we've really been adamant and I think you've seen this now since the advent of original UEFI implementations, that our goal has always been to make sure that it works well. It's smooth, it's responsive, it's well laid out, and we didn't ever want to treat it from a gimmicky perspective that just because we could put something in there that we should do it. Okay. Um, so our goal has been to this generation refine and improve key points of usability, um, and we're hoping that in the next generation to really do some, I think, some really awesome stuff, and some of that will be based on your guys' feedback on what you want to see is if you guys are okay uh, creating a more a delineated uh, UEFI set between, you know, like I said, lower end boards and higher end boards. For everybody that's watching, I don't know if this is still the case. So yeah. You've changed roles a little bit. Yeah. Nobody reads more forum comments <laughs> than this guy. <laughs> like, literally. So I, if you have feedback, if you've put it anywhere, essentially, he will find it. But I, what's the best... Like, if people are watching and they want to yeah. have... If they have legitimate feedback, where's the best place to offer that to you guys? Um, you know, one, I'm sure you probably, if you don't have a problem with we could make a sticky thread in, you know, a PC, yeah. PC Performs if you guys are most active there. If you're not, um, you know, one of my new roles and responsibilities is ASUS does have an ASUS PCDIY website. That's right. Um, you can feel free to drop either a comment on that page or email me directly at PCDIY at ASUS.com. Uh, if you guys are more in the kind of the YouTube framework and Google Plus, same thing, you could go over to our um, PCDIY Google Plus community. Okay. You can leave a post there. I also am uh, pretty active in the Reddit community uh, for the Build a PC community in there as well. So See, if you I guys you. want to drop stuff there and, and other you know communities <laughs> out there for different places, uh, it, I will probably pop it up somewhere. <laughs> you know, so I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty all over the place. Um, so with that. This is our little bit of a revamped of our Easy Page. It's pretty similar to the last generation, but we've gone ahead and made a couple of improvements uh, just from a usability standpoint. So one of them is just right here, is that just giving you that visual, um, you know, immediate kind of gratification of knowing that, hey, my fans are all active, they're spinning. It's, it's actually based on RPM, so you'll see that some spin a little bit faster, some spin a little bit slower. So it's kind of just a cool element to be yeah. able to know that your system's actually working in that respect. Um, we maintain, of course, a really nice um, Easy XMP function. So once again, for you guys, if you did forgot to set it up, you know, as opposed to having to go through a couple of steps, which really, if you're somebody that's not familiar with this, it can be kind of daunting to realize I need to go into advanced, tweaker, mm -hmm. do this, right? Mm -hmm. I can just click a button, pick the profile, and then just set XMP. So it's, it's a very simple one-touch process. And right there, of course, we show you full uh, layout for the dims, the density, and the frequency that it's running at. You have real-time CPU temperature information listed along with the voltage. There's something, there's something about the CPU temperature graph working in real time in the UEFI that just blows my mind. It's I cool, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I realize that this stuff has been, it's been possible. Yes. But just seeing But it. just seeing it, yeah, I, I agree. Um, here, of course, we have the full listing, of course, of all your SATA-based devices. Um, and we've got, of course, the drag-and-drop boot priority, which we've had, you know, since we implemented the Very UEFI. Cool. And here we have the single one-touch option, same thing for easy overclockers, kind of like the TPU switches. You can just go from, um, you know, the power-saving mode to normal mode to optimal mode. So you can dynamically adjust that to your heart's content. Really, really, really simple. Now, a new item here is if we go to the manual fan,
touchpad tuning, we're the first vendor to implement full graphical control. Not just a graphic representation, but actually graphical control. So this is almost almost the same class, not yet the same class, but almost the same stuff that we're able to do in, in the Windows. operating system environment. And you can see right here, here where I was talking about, I can, I can switch from DC to PWM. Okay. And I can do that per each one of these headers. And this is all real time actually, which is really cool. So you'll actually hear fans responding to this as you're making this adjustment. So here, if I wanted chassis fan four, I could set that to that, and then I could go to full speed and it'll make that adjustment. Or I could go ahead and pull down here to standard, silent, I can go over to manual, and of course with manual I have my multiple points, and I can drag and drop all that stuff. And like I said, the big thing here is this is per each single one of the headers, so the granularity and control you have, unlike other board vendors, is sometimes what you'll see is they'll give you these five fan headers, but chassis two, three, and four are all linked to one header. So what that means is that when you make that control adjustment, yeah, okay. all three of those fans are hooked into the same control, which I guess isn't necessarily horrible, but to me, because sometimes uh, not everybody is as sensible at how you run your cables. Right. It could mean that you have one cable on the top of your chassis, another one on the back, and then one maybe on the bottom, which where you really don't want them to be linked in. They really should be independent of each other. You actually have responding to each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just uh, that granularity and control. So this is a really awesome new function. And the great thing is, if you notice, we didn't leave the easy mode page. Mm. We did all that just from that page because our key goal here was to try to make sure that for all the key functions that somebody really needs to do, one touch overclocking, adjusting the boot priority, adjusting XMP or fan controls, it's all adjustable. I don't need to go into the advanced section of my UEFI to do things that probably most people need to do. Even this new rapid storage feature, this is pretty cool because this will allow you to do a hardware-based RAID enablement without also having to leverage the Intel Option ROM, which historically to enable RAIDs, you would have to turn this on and then wait for the system to post right. and then go into the Intel it's Option it's ROM a, yeah. Manager. So it simplifies that process oh, as well. Okay. So it's a, a nice. one-top RAID enablement. Okay. So um, with that, Let's go though into the uh, advanced section just to show you some of the other parts. Now I'm not going to go over every portion because actually, in actuality, we know most of you guys don't actually use every single part of the UEFI. So what we really want to do is just focus on some of the cool improvements we've done. One is here is that we've added a persistent information monitor. So you can see right here on the right hand side, we have real time information about your frequency, your temperature, your clock speed, your memory, your voltage. And all that's always going to be listed to you there. So regardless of whichever tab that I go to, I'm always going to see that information is persistent nice. there. So that's just a nice plus right there. Um, now for this generation, we've gone ahead and made some improvements to my favorites. And if you remember the previous generation, we had that ability to kind of hotkey and create a, 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 you know, a quick shortcut table to be able to jump to anywhere in the UEFI. Mm -hmm. Well, now what we can go ahead and do is we've almost given you like a full table of content system that you can map all the functions you want and dedicate your own primary home page. Okay. Um, so if you see here, I could go to like AI Tweaker, and once I go ahead and select AI Tweaker, I could go in and you know pick pick this as an option if let's say I wanted it in there. And you have all the subtrees available to you, so I'm not, I'm not gonna add all of them in there. Um, but you'll see right there now, if I were to leave and go to back to my favorites tab, that's now an option there. And you can imagine still a good idea. setting all the ones that you want, which you normally use. So maybe the CPU multiplier, CPU voltage, DRAM timings, fan setting, uh, SATA operation, you know, voltage monitoring. So eventually, if you go into the UEFI, you maybe only go to that My Favorites page because it has all just the settings yeah. you need, yeah. and I don't go to the any other pages that I don't need. Yeah. Um, so that's a nice new improvement that we made for this generation as well. Um, now, the next one is uh, the Q fan control. If, uh, excuse me, if I go excuse me, to the monitor function, we have a new tab here called Q fan tuning. So for you guys who are familiar maybe with our previous generation boards where we had Fan Expert 2, uh, it would dynamically auto-tune all the fans. And it would go and essentially check their minimum level operation and their maximum right. level operation. And this was done through the AI suite in Windows. And in Windows. But right. now we've gone ahead and introduced this uh, to the UEFI. So if I go ahead and click on this, it'll say, hey, do you want me to go ahead and tune all the fans for you? So it'll press OK. And uh, Ryan, you can probably hear. I, we can hear. I think you can probably hear it on the stream. They're spinning all the fans on the, the system. All the fans have ramped up, and now it's going to go ahead and calibrate every single one of the fans. And the great thing about this is you could have a mix and match of fans. It doesn't matter which vendor, three pin or four pin, whatever it might be. It'll go through the calibration process. The big benefit to this as well is is that historically in the UEFI, we've had to have sometimes had fixed. Um, fan uh, targets as far as what you could adjust mm -hmm. because we didn't know technically what the fan was possible of. So we may have forced you to have an artificially higher minimum value 
in the UEFI, then you could, your fan could actually drive because we didn't know that. There's right. no way for you to right. know it. And if you applied a lower uh, fan percentage or fan duty cycle, the fan may not have started. So what's this, what this is doing is it's applying peak voltage, minimum voltage, yes. to find the minimum and maximum e exactly. fan speed. So we can find out. And it records that information so that and you now can use UEFI it for uh, either the auto settings or for manual configuration. Correct. And, and now this will also directly tie into manual key and values. So your new minimums that okay. will be available are the new minimums that are specific to your fans. Okay. So really awesome just feature that we've simplified and made available. Now, like I said, nothing new for you guys uh, that were already using our software in AI Suite. Yeah, but if you're one of you guys that didn't, didn't use it, or maybe like a SteamOS user, a SteamOS is continuing to progress in its you know maturity and, and functionality, this is, of uh, course, you can't run AI Suite yet in Linux. Right. Um, so this is allowing you to take it still advantage of this technology, um, but in this environment. So you can see here, it figured out, hey, I know what my new minimum values are. It gives you that little information, and I have that available. Hmm. And so now if I go down, we'll see that we have, uh, of course, all, all our fan settings. So I'm just going to show you an example of the wide gamut. First off, you can see we have the DC and the PWM capability that we discussed. But the more interesting part is here's the, the Q fan source. You see I have CPU, motherboard, VRM, PCH, and the temperature sensor. So right. I can go ahead and map now these to any one of those applicable input values to mm -hmm. go ahead and have okay. it respond based on okay. that. I uh, have the low limit. And then here, if you go to manual, we've also included a new um, delta point within the, uh, the range of items that you can set. So previously, we used to have a minimum and a maximum. Um, for the for the actual temperature target and for the F, uh, RPM target, right. uh, but to even give you more granularity, we've also now given you a middle target. So mm -hmm. you now have three points of ramping that's uh, available to you. Still, though, in AI Suite, it's even further refined because you can control ramping in between each one. So you can control how fast the actual ramp occurs, whether you want a slow rev or whether you want uh, a faster rev. And uh, we also have introduced the ability that if you want full fan stop. So if you're just idling in the desktop, you know, and maybe just checking out the latest PC Pro article, right, or a YouTube video, um, and there's no reason for even the fans to spin, right, for the best power efficiency, you can just have them also stop too. So that when the temperature curves at a low enough point, it just also stops the fans out. Huh. So okay. overall, I mean, uh, when you look at that, that that of course is available, like I said, for every single one of the fans, some pretty awesome stuff that we have incorporated in there. Now, uh, we still keep, uh, you know, great functions like we had, like the quick note technology uh, in the previous UEFI where you had the ability to go ahead and, you know, type in notes, whether it's overclocking notes or setup or configuration notes. We can still go into the SATA ports and rename every single one of the SATA ports so you have that flexibility of knowing. Um, but one new function that we've introduced that's pretty cool is our new Easy Tune um, wizard. Now, for Easy Tune, this is just the infancy of what we think is going to be possible, and we're looking to even extend this actually a lot, lot further in the long term. But you can see right here, um, once again, we preface that I would say that the users, to really get the best experience, should do auto-tuning. But mm -hmm. users that don't want to use auto-tuning, uh, you can go in here and you go to the OC Wizard, for example, and we have contextual experience-based um, options. So you can do like daily computing or gaming or media editing, if I were to select that. You can then see visual icons to let you know um, what you should huh. overclock towards. So, you know, Intel box cooler, tower heat sink, closed loop, a closed loop water cooling solution. You could select that corresponding option, and when you select it, it'll let you know, hey, okay, I'm going to overclock my system to that corresponding CPU frequency. It'll make the adjustment to the DRAM, and you're good to go. So mm -hmm. it makes, um, I think, the um, overclocking process a little bit more visual for people that don't understand necessarily like numbers or things along those lines. Right. And we see sometimes people like do that. They'll buy parts and they'll buy like a K part, but they don't really know how it actually all works together. Um, so, but they yeah. know they can realize things like this, like pictures and, and kind of understand this. So it's our kind of dedication to show you guys, doesn't matter where you are at, at kind of that, that uh, knowledge level, right? You can be, you know, an entry level novice user. You can be somebody like me, been doing it for a long time, or like Ryan, uh, but you could get value out of it. Oh, yeah. And we have uh, also RAID Wizard. Wade is kind of one of those things that we have a lot of people always ask us. I don't know how to set up RAID. So this is also a thing. You don't have to go into the Intel Option ROM to do this. You can have your two SSDs um, or your two mechanical hard drives connected, and it will auto create the RAID volume for you. So yep. all you have to do is just have this connected. I would preface it that ideally for this function to work best, we do recommend that no other devices be connected when the RAID gets initialized. So that's generally what we recommend whenever you're doing anything with with messing RAID. with your yeah. storage. And and it's usually also we find that most people when they're doing it, that would be the normal practice because you're first setting up a RAID when you first set up the system. Yep. But if you're somebody that I guess already has the system built up and then you decide to RAID later, mm -hmm. uh, just for best practices, we would strongly recommend don't have any other devices attached when you 
excuse me, when you were to run that wizard. Okay. Um, so overall, that just gives you uh, some of the work that we've put into the UEFI, but overall, it's still, of course, going to maintain its, you know, its fast, fluid, and responsive nature, and, and still keep all the st stuff that you would expect. And, and most importantly, the other big part, too, is going to be um, the UEFI maturity and the auto rule set. You know, we don't talk about that a lot, but that is one of the features that we feel that when you buy an ASUS board, uh, you're getting is that you're getting auto rules that are extremely mature and are sensible and help to give you guys a stable and interoperable experience because it's not something that That's we do our experience message a lot but you know we have literally uh, you know tens of thousands of man hours that we put into interoperability compatibility tests mm -hmm. to make sure that memory modules work devices work all that type of stuff and that's built into the UEFI, so it's not one of those things you see as a visual spec, but for us it is one of the value propositions when you get the board. So right. that uh, wraps up the UEFI. With that, I'd say let's go back into the OS. and go back take into Windows and uh, look at the updated software there. Yeah, correct. And uh, of course, there's that other part. The, the uh, yeah. of course, the last last configuration list that lets us know, hey, I made all these changes. Um, you know, it's just letting you know what's going Make on. Make sure you. I like that. The, keep an eye on, keep track of what you actually change. Of what you change. Uh, wait, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, right? like, oh, oh, I set the voltage to, you know. You know 7.4 volts. Yeah, I, I, don't, have, I don't think that's possible. I should have not done that. In your system, but oh, no, <laughs> everything is on fire. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. So uh, we've gotten back into the desktop here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pull a couple of different things up. Okay. Actually, I think I'm, I'm, uh, I might want to revert just to make sure I'm at 100% UEFI defaults. So okay, we'll that's fine. We'll double check here. Uh, I'm looking through. Uh, still, if you have questions in the live stream, feel free to uh, address them to user questions in the chat. That's uh, Scott, who's doing some stuff for us. He's keeping. Uh, we're, we got we got a great list of questions here, and we'll wait towards the end of the demos. And if you're watching live, at the end of this demo section, we're going to give away the Z97A, but you have to be watching live, you have to be in the chat room at pcpro.com slash live. One of my favorite boards, it. I really love that. I mean, for the, for the money, I think that board's like, it's like a little, it might be like 150 or less than 150 bucks, but to have the ISA to audio design, you know, the digital design, the audio tuning technology that we're gonna demo, and just so much of what we talked about, really the only thing it maybe doesn't have is integrated Wi-Fi, but it's, an, it's a really awesome board for the money. Mm. Um, Okay, so I, I, I'm, I am going to go back and reset the defaults, but I think before we do that, we can still use the fact that we're already in the OS. So let's, okay. let's just quickly first show off uh, uh, what are the new audio functions. So we talked about with Crystal Sound 2.0, uh, which is the name that we're using instead of Supreme Effects, which we have on ROG, we're calling it Crystal Sound on the mainstream series of motherboards. Um, but we talked about that auto-optimized profile technology, right? Yes. Um, so let me go ahead and just show you that, guys. So I'm just going to plug uh, my headphones right here. I just got, these aren't Asus or anything, it doesn't matter what headphones, these are uh, some nice uh, Sony monitors, these are MDR based headsets. I'm just going to plug this into the front headphone port. Okay. And when you plug that in, you get the same little message you normally see. Hey, did you plug in a, he a headphone or a front speaker, right? Um, so we're going to click on that, but now you actually see that you get a little picture, right? So mm -hmm. it, it shows you like a picture of like in-ear monitors, uh, or you're going to have a picture here of over-the-ear headphones. Uh, there also can be the option, uh, if you do line level out, if you'll get the desktop speakers. Okay. Um, and so each one of those, we've actually, like I said, we worked with the DTS group uh, to create different actually profiles that are specific to the way that those drivers are generally designed and those type of playback devices. Um, so you have a specifically optimized parameter. So since these are over-the-ear headphones, I would go ahead and select that and then pick OK. And then at that point, if I now head over here into DTS Ultra 2 PC, we have new three entirely new optimized essentially presets that we've made hmm. specifically for users. One for movies, one's for music, and one's for games. So if you want to go ahead and uh, switch this on, you can go ahead and, and have optimized audio environments for those different, excuse me, those different types of listening environments. Um, and we'll talk about in our app tuning feature how even this is linked into app tuning, which gets really exciting because we're going to be able to do stuff like application-specific overclocking that automatically changes your network prioritization that also automatically check, uh, changes your audio uh, <laughs> settings. So it's kind of crazy. And when you guys see what I'm talking about, hopefully you guys are going to be like, oh my god, I need to go back and rewind and rewatch that because I just didn't realize that's what they were talking about. Some really um, awesome stuff. So that's. Um, uh, that kind of wraps out the initial part of what we have there for the new Crystal Sound 2 implementation. So for us, it's it's not just the, the hardware-based portion of it, but we also wanted to complete it with, I think, a really great software-based experience. Cool. Um, so 
The next portion right here is going to be with Turbo LAN, which is just very basic. As you can see right here, we, of course, have the active network monitor, which gives us uh, the information. So if we were downloading yeah, using or much. web browsing, exactly, nothing's really being used because <laughs> we don't have an active network connection. Um, but if we were to go ahead and open it up, you can see that you have really easy one-touch options for, you know, things like Skype or voice over IP, um, you know, or media streaming or for games or for file sharing. It's very simple to go through and just a drag and drop prioritization for which applications you'd have uh, that want to have preferred focus. You now, how, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. This totally un un unscripted here. How does this interact with your networking products where you have some QoS involved? That's actually a those? great question. So we, uh, as really the only component manufacturer out there that has an actual networking division, right. uh, we're very conscious of the fact that you can have routers that have their own packet priority optimization routines. And so this is actually designed in the back end to be able to complement that. Um, not to even, not as to the same degree as what we've done with Game First 3. Game First, Game First 3, which is going to be on RG7, ROG series motherboards really takes it to the next level. Um, what we've found uh, with TurboLAN is that we'd say in probably about, um, I'd say 70% of routers that are out there on the market, you should not have any, I'd say, competing or contention issues with okay. how prioritization schemings occur. And a small select of, I'd say, older generational uh, QoS-based technologies. And these are generally routers that we've found, um, not, not necessarily our own, but for just other companies, um, but they probably go back beyond, I'd say, 2010. Um, mm. Just the way that the QoS routines and stuff like that were managed, they tend to be a little bit more specific and not as intelligent as how they're evaluating okay. certain items. You may want to disable that, but in those situations, we've found that the overall effectiveness of the QoS routines for those generational routers isn't very good anyway. So actually, you would get uh, better performance by turning that turning off. Turning theirs off because of using something like this. Yeah, because okay. of just uh, how networking packets and protocols have changed since that time frame. Um, they're not really uh, ve relevant as much anymore. Okay. So you should probably change it. Okay. Um, so that's so we found there shouldn't really be any issues in that regard. So and like I said, the great thing here is it's agnostic once again to the network controller. So whether we were to use Wi-Fi or the physical NIC, it doesn't matter. We can uh, packet prioritize and optimize that. So let me go ahead and uh, just get back in the UEFI, reset the defaults, and we'll jump into AI Suite 3 to okay. show the auto tuning. I'll look through uh, while we reboot here. Let me see if I can find a couple of questions that we can answer. Okay. Skullbringer wants to know, uh, does the new Asus Z97 boards, do they have official Xeon support? That's a great question, and we only offer Xeon support as we've traditionally done on uh, WS series motherboards. Okay. So our Z97 WS and our um, P9 series uh, WS motherboards will offer Xeon su microcode support. Yes. Okay, okay. And I guess if that's something that you guys really, 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 really want, <laughs> Um, you know, same thing. You can let me know, and uh, you know we can definitely nothing's off the table. But we generally find just based on the uh, pricing of Xeon-based parts and the usage model that it tends to not be something that most users are usually putting into um, our mainstream series of motherboards. Now that being said, we do do loose interoperability compliance tests with the Xeon parts on them. So it doesn't mean that if you put it in there. It won't work. Right. Actually, it will run, and probably for most intents and purposes, it'll seem transparent. It will seem like it's actually working. Um, we just won't officially state 100% compliance. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one more, and, and this might be something that we're getting into a, a future topic for today's streams. Is there any inter any interest in allowing future motherboards to drive higher impedance headphones? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That's actually you know that's a really really good question. So. Um, you know, uh, Asus has had a you know a Zonar division for a very long period of time, so we have a really good understanding of headphones on the market. Um, in all actuality, if you actually look at the majority of very good headsets on the market um, from a number of different manufacturers, the actual uh, impedance uh, for the headphones is generally underneath 150 ohm. It's between 32 to 64 to 150. Now, even if you put an operational amplifier on the board that could drive, let's say, 300 to 600, it doesn't mean that the total the total actually audio design is complemented to drive that type of headset experience. Okay. Because it's not just the operational amplifier sure. that drives the entire soundstage experience. Um, this is the reason why we really find that for people that would really be driving, so let's say like I have a pair of Bear Dynamic DT990s, so you can get a customized 600 ohm version of that, or you get some really nice Hi-Fi men or some Audio Z LC3s or something like that. So we're talking about very expensive headsets that have high impedance driving stages. You would want some 
really nice hardware to be able to drive that in the way that they've been designed. And that's not just from us. Ask those headphone manufacturers and they'll tell you right. that having a 600 ohm op amp on the board is not going to cut it. And we don't, uh, that's the way that we perceive the market. We, we see that most people that are going to use headphones on a integrated motherboard solution, even though we've made an improvement towards it, are going to be in that 32 to about 150 ohm space. Okay. Now technically you could drive higher than that. You could drive 300 or 600. The difference will be is that the experience though won't fundamentally really be what it should be. And so we don't want to over message it from the perspective of giving you something that really doesn't give you that best experience. You should, if you really have a, a real high quality 600 ohm headphone, you should get a discrete sound card. You should get a USB DAC, which of course we make, you know, solutions for that. <laughs> right, if, right, right. If that's the direction you want to go in. Okay. That's a good answer. That was from uh, Scott Thiessen in the chat room. So but thank that, you that's that a, question. that's a very good question. Yep. Yeah. So do we get everything back? Yeah, it should, All excuse right. me, it should be back. All right. So. Oh man, the new start menu. Okay, okay so uh, we're you know in AI Suite 3. So uh, AI Suite 3 has gone through a little bit of an overhaul. It still looks pretty similar to what we had in the last generation. Not some huge changes. Uh, you can see what we've tried to do is just streamline some of the accessibility points where we have the dedicated modules. We've got TPU for, of course, all your tuning aspects, you know, for frequencies and voltages. Fan Expert 3 for, of course, all that fan calibration technology. Sure. Uh, DigiPlus Power Management, which is going to be for, of course, all the v, uh, VRM and PWM adjustment. And then, of course, Turbo App, which we'll talk about. And then EPU, which, of course, is for power management. Um, so what we're going to focus in on, though, is, excuse me, what we focused on last year, which was four-way optimization. So if you remember, four-way optimization brought together auto tuning, mm -hmm. Fan Expert, EPU, and DigiPlus all in one fell swoop. So it was a single button that would allow you to pretty much auto overclock, fan calibrate, tune your VRM for power efficiency and, and stability, and then you know do all those cool things where we talked about where like it auto shut off like add-in SATA controllers or USB ports like right. conserve power the and all that using, stuff. Yeah. So for five way, we're extending that with a new function that we're going to call app tuning that we'll talk about after we run the actual auto tuning okay. process. So that's where we get five from. But we went back to the drawing board to be able to really look at how we could continue to make auto-tuning really robust. So um, I think auto-tuning has actually been really impressive and unquestionably has been the best uh, dynamic auto-overclocking technology out there. But what we did is to really give you guys more granularity and control. And based on a lot of your guys' feedback and our experience, what we've done is add some cool stuff in here. So first off, we've given you the ability to control the ratio starting value. So if you want to start the overclock process, by default, I guess I should clarify, by default, the auto tuning process will start from stock, then automatically kick into a, a preset, uh, an initial kind of like basic overclock, and then ramp up from there okay. um, to whatever the maximum that your CPU, your cooling solution will allow for up to 1.275 vid in terms of the voltage. Okay. Um, that's very important because unlike some other solutions that may be out there in the market are starting to come in, we will not use any voltage possible. And the reason why is because in our assessment, 1.275 is pretty much a thermal wall. If you give 1.3, 1.4, whatever it might be, even though you technically may be enabling that overclock, there's no thermal solution on the market that can dissipate that voltage. So you're effectively putting in an amount of voltage that could be dangerous to your CPU. Right. It could reduce voltage degradation it consumes more power and it's just it doesn't make sense uh, it should be efficient and effective and that's the way that we see it so uh, we're going to work within that but if you want to control what that start point is you can now pick that you can just pick whatever your starting multiplier is and it'll attempt to start off and then tune up from there hmm. okay? okay so that's one point does that's that lower the time that it's doing the it, optimization it, of course it could lower that time because okay. you're starting off from a lower point okay. now this all assumes though that your CPU would even have that capability of starting off from that point right uh, that's the reason why we always recommend the default because the default will start always from the baseline right um, okay the next option though is one that we've seen with a lot of users which is target CPU frequency tuning well you have actually a lot of people out there that sometimes what they do is they kind of just get it in their head that they want to shoot for a specific target frequency so sometimes it actually tends to be more conservative there are users that sometimes I buy like a 4670K, 4770K, and I'm like, I just want to overclock to 4.3. Even if my CPU could do more than that, I don't want to. I just want to overclock to that frequency, or I want it to be 4.4. .4. I just want to pick a target, whereas our baseline, once again, as I said, is that it will do to whatever is capable. Okay. So it'll do whatever is possible. But here, instead, what you could do is, if I just wanted to be able to go to 4.4, right? That's what it'll shoot for. And once it gets to 4.4, it'll stop. It okay. won't go any further. Even if you have additional headroom, there's possibility, it won't exceed that. 
it'll just go up to 4.4. .4. Okay. So it gives you, once again, just more granularity and flexibility to define the target that you want. Now, of course, not all CPUs are created equal. Uh, in terms of their margin. So there could be the possibility you could set maybe 44 or 45, but your CPU may be only be able to do 42. So even though you select that, doesn't mean that we can guarantee that result. It just means that we'll gotcha. set that as what the maximum tune result possibility Fair. will be. Now, in addition, this one is where it gets really exciting, where we have now target frequency, excuse me, target temperature profiling. So mm. you have a lot of users out there that they look at overclocking from a temperature perspective. And so what that means is that they don't ever want their CPU to go over 80C, right? Well, that's what I can do now. I can go in and I can define that to only uh, do overclocking to that temperature. What did it, what temperature did that start at? What uh, did that go up to again? <laughs> so we actually have 100, it at, 100, at 120 C? Yeah. I don't want my temperature to get to 120 C. I, I, I would agree. <laughs> I would agree. Um, but, you know, we, we, we've left the option in there. But the cool part here is actually in, you know, in that lower portion, right? For users, whether it's 65 C, whether it's 70, whether it's 80 C, you get to pick that correlating target. Now, it's important to understand that when temperatures, once again, stress test temperatures are going to be different than real world temperature usage, right? right. When you're actually right. playing a game, you're going to be underneath a much lower temperature than you would be under the stress test, right? But this uses the stress test as that metric. Yeah, and so and, and in the chat, somebody's asking, Tate Man's asking, will will this go further if you have a third party heatsink setup? The answer is yes. Yeah, of course. Right. Well, that's that's the whole that's point. The has idea. always been for auto tuning is that the better cooling you have, right? it will always give you a result that's specific to that. So if you go from an Intel retail fan to, you know, a uh, uh, Noctua U12S, and then you go up to a Noctua U14S, and then you go up to the big beast that they just really started with the, the 15, right? <laughs> that double wide guy, right? Yeah. Um, you would always keep getting better results. The only thing that would limit you would be the vid, right? We're never going to go over that 1.275, okay. because like I said, that's, we feel, and is there's a there's no is way to change that as a user. As of right now, there isn't. Okay. We are actually potentially looking to roll that out as a patch up Date. So if you guys really want to, for the select community that maybe is looking to have, you know, triple water cooling setups, have much more advanced, robust cooling solutions that could potentially control up to that, we may allow for maybe up to about 1.35. Okay. 1.35 is potentially can be cooled by very high end uh, cooling solutions or areas where you have very low ambient temperatures. Um, but after even 1.35, even like a quad stage uh, water cooling setup could not thermally okay. control that, at least under stress tests. Right. Um, you know, 1.35, like under gaming, like if you were just web surfing, playing actual games, the temperatures would be still manageable. Within you still range, need a yeah. good cooling solution. But if you were stress testing it, even there, it's, it's, okay. it's a no-go. Okay. Um, but we think this is a really impressive feature. When you take a look at the granularity, now we can dynamically tune, um, you know, right off the bat to the, to the best uh, performance yeah. based on your system target frequency, start from a different value, do temperature testing. And for this generation, we've also now added in memory testing. So simultaneously, when the system does its CPU stress testing, it will also fill the memory and actively stress test the memory. Hmm. And the reason why hmm. we did this is that in our previous experience, we found that close to about 85% of users that ran auto tuning had a stable installed experience. Um, but there's, an, uh, there's a reality of the memory controller. As you raise CPU frequency, the memory controller actually will not always be able to align with that CPU frequency. Right. So to give you guys, I guess, just an, uh, 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 an example of this, your CPU may be able to do 4.6 gigahertz, but your CPU cannot do 4.6 with memory at 2400 simultaneously. Maybe you can only do 4.6 and 2133, right? Uh, even though your CPU at stock could do CPU at stock and 2400. Gotcha. This is also okay. part of the reason why XMP um, is also only linked in at stock frequencies. When vendors do XMP profiling, they don't ever qualify the XMP profile at an overclock frequency. They, o they exactly they okay. only qualify it at a base CPU frequency okay. because the memory controller vary, uh, varies in quality. Um, but this just is helping us to ensure that we even have a better degree of system stability uh, confidence for the user. Mm -hmm. And the last portion here is the stress test duration. We're now giving you the ability to fully customize that. So if you want to be able to go ahead and up to an hour in between and each interval. Each setting. Each interval, exactly. Okay. So if you want to walk away, we're right now on average, it probably takes you know maybe about 10 minutes or 12 minutes to go through its process. If you want it to take an hour, 
uh, in between each increment, you know, so you feel really confident. And how long would that process take? I could, you know, that all depends on, you know, your hardware <laughs> and everything. It could be as much as maybe, you know, six plus hours, maybe seven hours, if you had a CPU that could do like 4.8 gigahertz, right? Gotcha. Uh, because it would literally take one hour to go from one next to the other. But as we know, there's some users that sometimes love to stress test for really long yep. periods of time. Yep. Yep. So we just want to give you that ability. And we're also looking to patch in the ability that you can run this same test um, post when everything is completed for also uh, whatever time period. So when we look at uh, the overall core experience of how you can auto overclock, we really feel it's kind of unmatched in the granularity and control that you can have. Very so cool. I'm just gonna show you guys a, a very basic example of this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set the frequency tuning. Uh, we'll just do 4.6 as just an example for this. I'm gonna do the, um, the memory stress test. I'm gonna show that. I'm gonna bring that down though to just 15 seconds just for the, for the purposes of the, of the video, yeah, guys. We don't, wanna, we don't need to be here for seven hours. I'm gonna take away the EPU tuning portion uh, just to go ahead and also quicken just okay. slightly. Um, but overall, keep in mind, uh, what we have the ability to do here in five way is to do the auto overclock. It will also do EPU optimization, okay? It will do the fan optimization, so that full fan calibration process. Uh, it will do the Digi Plus power management. So all that will happen when you just press this button. Okay. So we're just gonna go ahead and click the start button. And our system will now restart. So what's gonna pretty much happen here is what's always happened in the past. It's gonna talk directly to the UEFI, because this is software, but this is a full hardware firmware and software based combination. Everything is working in unison here. Um, and even to the extent that if you complete the whole auto overclocking process mm -hmm. and you want to remove our software, you could take it out and the UEFI still has these settings in oh, here. Oh really? So this, oh, okay. And this That's is cool. not any different than previous generations. Gotcha. So right. I really want people to understand this is not software overclocking. For us, we just see it as that software is the end road to it's be being, it's, the, it's how you achieve yeah. this, right? Okay. It's the interface. Um, but this is literally just like if you were going in the UEFI and doing it yourself, we've just automated the process for you. Um, so it's gonna go ahead and, and kick on the process here. And you can see right here, what it's gone ahead and started is we uh, start from a baseline preset. Um, and then from that baseline preset, it will go ahead and begin to continue to auto overclock. And this is what we're talking about, that start value. You can control that start value. So if you want it to you know, be stock, or if you want it to be 3.9, if you want it to be 4.3, and this is just about sometimes controlling how fast that process goes. Okay. That's entirely up to you that you can define. So what we're looking at here is uh, the current CPU clock Current GPU clock. Yes, I because guess. this is overclocking the integrated graphics. Yes, we're, we are using integrated graphics. On yeah, this I don't have system. a discrete GPU, and I yeah. just did that. I know most of you guys are probably never going to run the iGPU. You're going to run a discrete GPU. Right. But this is showing you that our audio tuning does also improve the iGPU performance. So if maybe you're building like a smaller form factor box, maybe you're like on that mini ITX. Yeah. Um, especially with the Haswell, um, you know, the new iGPUs, you're getting some pretty healthy performance out of the iGPU. You know, it's not definitely. Um, ultra high definition graphics, sure. but you can comfortably run some modern game engines on there at reasonable settings. Um, so we've made new updates here to add some really cool information. So you're gonna start seeing CPU spiking and showing you all the real time stress tests. You can see memory's already kicked up to 7.3 gigs worth of active memory utilization. And we can see, yeah, there's our CPU. It's shot up so to 100%. it's showing temperatures, it's showing voltages. And this is all new. You can yeah. see we're showing you real time temperature readout. We're showing you the DTS offset. So that's cool because what we're telling you is this is the temperature in relation to the thermal junction. So your CPU has a, a final thermal junction temp. Okay. So we're telling you how far away you are from that thermal junction. Okay. So overall, you know exactly what's going on. We tell you exactly how much voltage your current CPU is at and what's the maximum voltage that's been applied. And like I said, this maximum won't exceed 1.275. And then we're even telling you how much the power consumption is. So we're giving you all this really cool information to know exactly how your system's being tweaked and tuned so that you have transparency at knowing how the system is, is getting overclocked. And you can also see here that we're doing per core tuning, uh, which is very important because that means we're maximizing the potential overclock of the CPU. As sometimes you can overclock higher on one and two cores than you can on all cores. So sometimes we might have like a, a active result for one and two might be 46 and then on all cores and only be 45. So this way we're maximizing this. And this also will come into play into app tuning because in app tuning, um, you're gonna be able to see how having um, control over frequencies and how overclocking aligns with different applications. So hmm. this is okay. a, a pretty cool function here. But um, overall, uh, the other port to this too is going to be is that, I remember we talked about that easy XMP switch functionality. Yeah. 
when auto-tuning runs, at the end we'll show you, we'll bring up like ADA or something like that, and we'll show you that the XMP for our memory has also been automatically applied as well. So not only have we now auto-overclocked our CPU, we've overclocked the iGPU, but our XMP profile has been automatically enabled. Mm -hmm. And we're stress testing all that, right? We're stress testing the CPU, we're stress testing the memory. And something that we've worked really hard is on also the stress test in itself. Our, our software engineer, um, Big shout out to Mark. Mark, thank you for working so closely with me on this. <laughs> I appreciate your guys' time and effort. And, you know, not to take away from what we're doing here on the live cast, guys, but you guys, there's tons of engineers that behind this stuff that you guys never see um, that work really, really hard on this stuff. And my gosh, okay, um, that's it's really cool, just the stuff that they're doing. So I'm really excited about just so I saw it hit. stuff here. Yeah, so it got to the limit. Okay. And so it's now going to reset. It's going to go ahead and reboot back in the operating system. And it's already accounted for when it got to a point of instability. So at this point, what it's going to do is it's actually going to revert back to the last known stable value. Or because we also set it to not actually the or last. Or if you set it to a limit. Exactly, which is and that's what I say. That's the <clears> second <throat> part. We set a limit as opposed to it getting to a uh, last known stable value versus right. uh, a point of instability. It now goes, I, I understand all those points. Let me go ahead and now just finalize my OC portion and I'll go through that. Now what you're hearing is actually the ramping because now it's kicked now it's in the fan to the fan stuff. expert. Okay. So it's finished on our overclocking. It's now going to go into fan tuning and it's going to go and continue on. So it's a really seamless process because it's great because you know you could just start this, you, you walk away, you're going to be able to come back to your system and you're going to be able to rock and roll and get up and running. So uh, a really impressive level of functionality. Now one thing um, that we'll also show down here is you'll see that there's going to be this little pop-out menu um, that we've also added for this generation that Fan Expert 3 is running. I don't want to click on it for right now, but that little button I'll show you afterwards. We also have now quick one touch profiles. So you don't even need to go into Fan Expert 3 to change your fan profile setting. So if you want to just switch your system into silent mode versus a standard mode or full fan speed, you yeah. can just go to that little icon and you'll click it and you'll see a little air, uh, little icons that you can quick um, quickly set that. So we've, we've tried to make this, you know, really as I think user friendly, um, but also complement the, uh, you know, the enthusiast experience. You know, a lot of us, I think we keep expecting more and more from our systems as far as how they work, you know, and how we want to utilize them. Nobody wants to use clunky pieces of software that don't respond no. well. Um, you that know. was acceptable years ago. But years, it's not, but it's, it's not, not anymore. anymore. Exactly. No. Um, now that's one thing that we forgot to message too. New for this generation, uh, you'll see there's a little slide in there, but it says extreme quiet. We've also now gone in and we are able to reset uh, the minimum fan curve to even sometimes below 20% fan duty. And this is what we call extreme quiet or ultra quiet operating mode where the fan can run extremely low. This is really important for PWM uh, fans, where PWM fans, because they can have significantly smoother um, fan curves uh, than a DC based fan. So they can operate at very low RPM. Sometimes you can get like some PWM fans that can go like 400 RPM and they can right. still effectively run. So you can have this really ultra low mode of a fan operation. So um, the Fan Expert 3 is finished. It goes to the DigiPlus power management. And we can see right here, it effectively got to the point where it says, hey, I tried to hit your maximum target, everything more or less pretty close to it. And you can see we got to 45 on one and two. Okay. And then we got to three, uh, for three and four though, we only got to 44. It shows us all our thermal temperature reading settings, our iGPU performance. Um, and uh, of course, all our fan settings too. So if we click in between each one, we can see the report for every single one of our fans. So nice. all that information is there. Now keep in mind, this is just a conservative result. I think last year we showed even a higher result. Yeah, uh, this so. is not the limitation of the software. If I were to run this by default, actually I know this CPU, I can do, I can do 49 on one core <laughs> uh, and 48 on two and then 47 on all, on all cores. And then I have another one where I could auto tune it and it could be 48 actually on all. 48 or 1, 2, we 3, get and 4. Processors, so obviously. this is all the big just point accidentally send that, over. that you guys should just walk away with is, is that uh, whatever your CPU margin is, the tool has really been designed to complement that. Impressive. It's impressive. Your cooling, your yeah. CPU. Yeah. So that is uh, five-way optimization. But we didn't show the fifth part. So that's what we're going to show True. right here. So I'm just going to go back quickly to the fan option. And you can see right there, if I click that, now I've got, you know, here's silent. So if I click silent, that'll turn all my fans off. And it just keeps the CPU fans running at the up low, slowest setting. So that's great for like, you know, email, web browsing, YouTube, streaming, yeah. stuff like that. You know, uh, if you, of course, you really want to have super performance, there's of course full fan speed, we're rocking. If um, you need noise to go to sleep to. Yeah. 
You know, you like white noise, or you can go to standard. Standards, you know, that nice balance of pretty much everything's running comfortably, but it responds a little bit more quickly. Hey, whatever you want, but you can see how easy it is to go ahead and do that. So app tuning, I'm gonna switch here into auto mode, which is a requirement because this is linked into the power management for Windows. Okay. Um, but app tuning. So app tuning is what is new. Yes. And app tuning to me is kind of one of these. It's it's a I feel an absolute game changer. Uh, hmm, in my okay. opinion. Uh, and we're once again, this is just on the initial, we feel, baby steps of what we're going to be able to do here. And we have some really exciting plans coming down the road for what we want to do with app tuning. So what we're going to be able to do here is we've linked in you, give you the ability to have application-specific overclock profiles. So uh, an example of this, if let's say, you know, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of all different kinds of games. Let's say I open up my Marvel Heroes, right? You this know, does not surprise me. I want to be able to jump into that, <laughs> right? I can refresh. And um, you'll see that there's that EXE, right? Okay. Um, or it could be for any game. This could be, you know, if you wanted to open up Maxon uh, and you were going to do some 3D rendering, if you were going to open up, you know. You could also search for that EXE. Yes, you could manually search for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. I, I think the refresh option is the easiest because you just open up the EXE and it shows you whatever you have there. But keep in mind, I'm just showing a game, but guys, this could be anything you want. It could be Battlefield 4, you know, it could be a web browser, it could, it could be, be Photoshop, uh, it could Premier. be Photoshop, Premiere, yeah. anything you want, all right? Um, so I'm just going to click into this, and when you click into this, you're now going to see that you have, of course, one through four available to you, wow. as well as a uniform uh, profile. So the advantage of this is what we know is actually different programs get different performance. An example is Adobe Premiere is extremely well-threaded, but actually Adobe Lightroom is not. Adobe Lightroom is actually singly, uh, uh, uniquely singular-threaded. Mm -hmm. And what we know is when we do, let's say, our auto-tuning, your CPU may be able to do like 4.8 on one single thread, but it might only do 4.6 on all threads. So guess what? Well, in Premiere, I can have 4.6, right? But when I'm in Lightroom, I can do 4.8. And we can go ahead and map that out. You can go ahead and create your prioritization per each program. So as you switch from program to program, mm -hmm. it will automatically change the frequency in real so, time. Let me ask this. Yes. What if you have both those applications open? Yes, so that is an entire possibility, but only one program is always going to be in the foreground for prioritization purposes in Windows. So when that program is active... So it's actually when it has focus yes. is when these are applied. Correct. Not just when they're open. Not just when they're open. And But you also see here that well, how we're you managing that. Priority list. We have a priority oh, okay. list. So you can have that sequence. So if that program's in the foreground, that's what has prioritization. But like I said, we're just at the stepping stone of what we can do with some of this technology, and we're really excited about taking this even further. But I think you can begin to see that if you start to customize this, it's really impressive because you can have really tailor-made system performance to get the best out of every program um, and have the best experience. Now, is the, that folder icon allow you to save or to use different profiles? Like Yes, so that's, okay. exactly, so that's exactly what that's for. And then moving there, though, we didn't stop there. We've linked this into our audio and to our networking. So an example is if I jump into Marvel Heroes, I want to use the game audio preset that we've already optimized for, so it'll automatically switch that on for me. But if, let's say, I was to open up like Cyberlink Power DVD, or maybe I have a YouTube player, or whatever other application, I could switch it into that. And hmm. same thing, I'm playing a game, so what do I want? I want the LAN prioritization to be automatically at high. So we think this is a really powerful tool, and I don't think a lot of you guys are going to get this right off the bat because it is kind of a it's yeah. complex way to uh, approach actually how you think about overclocking because historically, in the same ways that people used to think about overclocking with just manual vids and like everything was fixed, and how we changed the game when we talked about like adaptives and offsets and stuff like that, where keep in mind also auto-tuning is still doing that adaptive offset, right? Because if we do, this is all about efficiency to us. We want to be able to try to have the best efficiency possible. If we open up an ID, right now we can see, right, we have the um, XMP profile enabled, but guess what? Our CPU voltage is really nice, right? So when the CPU is idling, all that voltage comes down, our CPU frequency comes mm -hmm. down because we're doing an adaptive voltage. We're not forcing everything, right? right? So this is a, keeping it at one. We're, at, we're keeping this really nice value, and this is another way of just extending that all the way through. So. I think some pretty powerful stuff that we've uh, integrated into this generation for auto tuning technologies here. <laughs> so that uh, wraps up the five way optimization suite. So um, next on, we're gonna take a look at, I think at some of the cool little functionality we've done on the, the media and the push notice stuff to wrap out this. Um, but you know, definitely as you guys are checking this out, you know, whether it's right now in the live stream or later on if you're checking out the archive online, I'd really love to see your guys' feedback because one thing I think that we've shown here again is we're paying attention to what you guys are asking about us. We're really trying to come back year after year 
and not show you the same thing and really keep evolving this so that you guys get the best experiences that you can from your <coughs> systems. People in there are asking the question I asked during our break. Yeah. Does any of this include Asus video card optimization? So that's a good question. As of right now, it doesn't um, to, to a minor degree. It does, but not to a full degree. Um, we are thinking already in that route. So to, to do that, what I do want to show you is that if I jump into um, this setting, you'll see that there's a GPU boost tab. Okay, if you were to have an ASUS graphics card installed or actually any graphics card because this is co-leveraging our GPU tweak software, you're going to now have start to have the ability to customize the voltage, the fan speed, the clock frequencies inside AI suite, even for your graphics card. Um, and for this generation, we're not yet including auto overclocking, but we do already have some fan calibration processes built in. And we are internally right now evaluating the possibility of auto-tuning graphics card overclocking into this. Um, the one difficulty that right now we have with this is that, as you know, with the CPU, it's kind of like an open architecture. We can, we can make it work with the CPU because we know the CPU. The problem with sure. G GPUs is that different vendors sometimes have different like microcontrollers and different VBIOSes. Yes. Much more um, custom. So the issue with that is, um, I hate to say it, but it will work probably best and only as of right now, internally, we're projecting on ASUS graphics cards which you know, I think is, a, is, is not bad because we make awesome GPUs anyways. Right. Um, but as of right now for our probably, if we do get auto-tuning incorporated in for GPUs, it will probably only be on ASUS graphics cards because we'll only be able to ensure the full experience and functionality. Well, based on what people in the chat room are saying, I think that would still be something they would want to see. Okay, yeah, yeah. then, then yeah. we are definitely evaluating that at, at this stage. So. All right, well, let's go ahead. We're going to do our last two uh, smaller demos here, yep. the Wi-Fi Go and NFC stuff and the notifications. Yep. Just a reminder, as soon as these demos are done, we're going to give away the first motherboard. You have to be at pcpro.com slash live in the chat room, uh, and we will let you know how you're, how you're going to, how they're going to win that. It's going to, It'll be easy, trust me. It won't be a, it won't be a trivia question where you have to do a lot of research. You just have to be watching and you have to be participating. So Yeah, it'll be it'll easy be to there. win an awesome motherboard. It will be. One of you, at least. <laughs> and then another one later, because we also have an ROG board we'll give away, too. Okay. So uh, which one are we going to look at now? So we're going to um, bust out my older Nexus 7 that I've got right here. Okay. You know, a lot of us right now, we've got mobile devices. You know, we got, you know, smartphones and tablets and whatnots. And um, what we've done for this generation is we've incorporated a pretty cool application um, that we have that's part of our uh, AI suite as well as part of um, just an application that you can download. It's iOS compatible, it's Android compatible. Uh, we are working. I'm actually a Windows uh, mobile user and I love Windows mobile. I wouldn't go back to anything else. Um, so if you guys are rocking, you know, uh, a Nokia <laughs> phone right now, I'm with you hopefully very soon. But right now, iOS and Android ready, okay. um, you're good to go. Okay, so uh, with that, we're just going to jump into... So please tell me why I'm holding a Nexus device while you're yep. using this motherboard. Uh, well, that's, that's where we have the application installed. Okay. So uh, if you want to What does ahead, it do? What, what do we do? What we do here is actually we've got this really new cool program called Push Notice. So okay. for any of you guys, if you've ever wished that you had the ability to actually get notification from your system in the event something might have happened in relation to maybe temperatures or voltages or fan speeds, it's here. Uh, we've now incorporated the technology where we have, through our SuperIO controller and a specialized driver that's monitoring the system, we can track this information in real time and whether you're in an intranet environment or an extranet. So, so whether you're in your house yes. or you're out on the go. Even if you're outside if you're your home. The, if you're on mobile network only. As long as you're on either some form of Wi-Fi outside your home or you're on some form of cellular connection, so 3, 3G, 4G, whatever, you can have this technology work. Now, I will preface it that if you're on an external network, you do have to sign into an ASUS account uh, that's part of the app. Sure. Uh, but as long as you're linked into that, it will work. Okay. Okay. Um, so you can see here, all we're going to need to do is enable push notice, and we just turn it on, and we've got a number of different options that we can monitor. We can do PC mode alerts. So if you want to know every time your system was to restart, shut down, or go to sleep. <clears throat> you can know that information. It will, it will alert you to that. You can even have it send a message like, you know, hey, you know. Hey, I restarted. Hey, I've restarted, exactly. Or system has restarted. Yeah. Or, okay. You know, hell is on, right? Or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it might be, right? You can do that. I think that's interesting, but I see that being less uh, useful than I think this one, which is the uh, PC alert st status. So for this one, I can go ahead and enable voltage, temperature, and fans. And so I'm just going to go ahead and click this on and uh, click apply here. And what we're going to need to go ahead and do is I need to go ahead and go into this app here. Okay. And we're just going to scan for our desktop. So initially when first setting up, you need to be on the same network. Okay. So it sees that corresponding device. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into the application. 
So it's going to be our push notice app here. And once I go ahead and detect my uh, desktop, essentially, it will say, oh, okay, hey, I realize that you're there. And so right here, we'll see, it should go ahead and... and so it's kind here. of doing a handshaking, syncing thing, so it's attaching that device to your account. Correct, yeah. So pretty much what we're just uh, setting up here is uh, allowing the system to go ahead and recognize the desktop. And what will happen right here is you'll see that we have, uh, it'll set you register that mobile device. And once that device has been registered, uh, then we can go ahead and have that be enabled. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I see, so, I see. yeah, so right here, you'll actually, because you could have this actually exist for more than one device, right? Maybe mm -hmm. you, you want to have multiple devices. So I just need to go ahead and turn this on here. Detecting it over our, over okay. our network here. Yeah, so you'll see right here, you might want to see, I don't know if you can maybe see it there. Yeah, it says like ASUS Technomar Marketing. Yep. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, you can go ahead and pick that device. And you can see right there. Yeah, see how it, it came up right there? Nexus 7. Yep. Yeah, so now we're going to go ahead and select that guy. So okay. now that's been paired. Yes. So now that we have, been, we have that paired, and as long as that application is on, we should be good to go. So actually, I researched for it again. I did need to research for it. Okay. So we can go ahead and uh, come on out. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and stop one of our fans down so he's, here. He's reaching down into the case to turn off or to stop one of the fans. And in th what will happen, let's see if we do this here. There we go. So it's hard, to, it's hard to see. We got an Asus notification. And if I drag that down, it says push notice, PC status alerts, CPU fan, zero RPM. Yep, yeah, so the fan has stopped. So I'm gonna go ahead and let go actually now of the fans. And since I have it sent to let me know when the system goes back to normal, it will actually also re-notify you once those fans have gone ahead and worked. Uh, excuse me, gone oh, back to ASUS working correctly. Notification. And there it says CPU fan 505 RPM. Correct. So yeah. this is a pretty awesome level of functionality. And if you guys remember in the Wi-Fi Go client, we talked about that we also have the remote desktop function. Mm -hmm. The remote desktop function has now been integrated to also support um, intranet and extranet-based capabilities. So we're not going to show the remote desktop. I think we've shown that off in the past. Yeah. It's pretty self-explanatory. But same thing, if at the moment you saw that maybe your system was having an issue, you could also take advantage of that ability. You could remote into your desktop, and you could even shut down your system if you needed to. So some pretty awesome functions if you think about that this is incorporated. And uh, once again, when we talk about like non-negotiable features, this push alert function, um, it's compatible with both the physical NIC and the wireless NIC. So it doesn't matter how you have it connected to your network and okay. whatnot. Okay. Um, so the cool thing is the Z87-A, the Dash I+, the Sabertooth, the ROG, the WS, all of them support this type of really advanced functionality cool. to allow you to monitor your system. So some, I think some pretty cool stuff there. Nice. So that is a push alert. So, uh, excuse me, push notice, excuse me. So uh, lastly here, we just want to show, I think, a cool... I got to jump back. I got to level I know, up, man. You, I saw you getting ready to click the play. But I, 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 I was, was man. I, I was ready. <laughs> I was ready to jump in, man. I want to respect my Thor. Okay. Um, so the next one here is we have Media Streamer. So, you know, a lot of us are, of course, fans of content and, uh, you know, taking advantage of it wherever we might be. So what we've gone ahead and done is we have a, a really great uh, program on our system. Let me see if I have my... Oh, there it is. My icon for Media Streamer. So Media Streamer um, for this generation is gonna once again be intranet and extranet capable. So same thing, if you're outside your home, if you've got cellular or Wi-Fi, you can stream music, movies, or images directly from your system to your mobile device. Um, so okay. uh, the great thing is you don't have to upload anything, you know, you don't have to worry about that stuff, so you can just stream directly from it. It's very simple, if we open up the actual application, um, you're gonna see that it shows to you all your devices. So I think, Ryan, you can see right there that we've got uh, couple of different devices available to us. Okay. And so we want to click on the one that says Asus Tech Marketing. Yeah. And so you'll see right there at the top, we've got different tabs. So you've got music, video, photos, right? So if you want to go ahead and click into the music folder, where it says we're on the music tab, and um, you can click on a folder. Let's see, what do we want to listen to, huh? And this is just, of course, in my, my music uh, directory. Yep. There we go. Get some. Uh, I think it's what Arcade Fire. Yep. Yeah. So very simple, really easy, and uh, it's a background ca client compatible too. So that means that even if now you minimize out of the app, it'll still keep playing the music too. 
So it's kind of like what you would expect because, you know, you might yeah. want to then open up your browser, surf the internet, you know, check your email, do whatever you want, right? But you still have that function enabled to you. That's so pretty cool. It's a really cool function. And, of course, that will work exactly the same if you wanted to do uh, photos and videos. So on videos, uh, if you wanted to maybe jump into that, um, I did a Blu-ray rip. I've got uh, Adventures of Tintin on there, you know, um, and uh, you can stream out video, you know. So they're same thing. You don't have to, you know, upload anything. You just have to have whatever video files you have on your system and you're good to go. So this is also something too that we see just like our NFC uh, project that we're gonna keep maturing and improving the functionality. So uh, we're gonna keep adding more functions or features or as we get feedback from you guys, we can go ahead and adjust and improve upon the functionality of these applications. So I think some pretty, cool. uh, pretty awesome function just built in and keep in mind, you, you get this inherently just with the board. You know, so I think uh, when we talk about, once again, experience versus spec, it's a really easy thing mm -hmm. to just say this is a spec, but when you actually get to using something like this, it's cool. You know, it's kind of like what you just want to be able to do with your hardware. You want to be able to have it kind of talk to each other and utilize it and take advantage of how things are set up. Now, what we're not going to demo, but also um, as part of this generation, which goes in line with Media Streamer, and you might have seen it a couple of you guys when you uh, saw our system uh, booting up, is we had a... <laughs> this uh, little home cloud. Right. Home cloud is a, is a cool new initiative uh, that we're rolling out that actually will allow you to directly take your full C volume and make it a personalized cloud. Um, so you don't have to upload anything. So for you guys that might use stuff like Dropbox or OneDrive or stuff like that, those are great services, nothing wrong with them, but you still have to upload. Here you right. can actually directly have access to your C drive in a cloud-based environment, and you can share files, you can share links. Is it specific to that partition? Yes, but you can map it to any volume. You so can. if you don't okay. want it to be your C drive, if I want it to be a, a, a D volume just a or an, any other any other drive, you can okay. do that. And in addition, uh, Home Cloud also has a cert, a streaming functionality built into it. It's not as robust as what's built into Media Streamer, um, but Home Cloud can do actually uh, rendering and trans rendering for file types. Hmm. So it can take hmm. files from that volume and also play that to you and stream that out as well. So we feel that from a combination of cloud-based experience as well, uh, we're not only giving the connectivity that you would want right on the boards, right. but we're giving you the experience of being able to have this as well. So a uh, great thing is there's none, none of this costs you any money. It's just it's part of just what comes with the board. So we think it's a pretty awesome experience. So hmm. I think overall uh, that That's cool. covers uh, not even everything, but a, lot, a good chunk of what we've done. <laughs> not for the even everything. What, what we've done for the mainstream series. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give away that motherboard. Okay. For those who are watching on the live stream, you're going to have a chance to win an Asus Z97A. Uh, and I'll give you directions here in just a second. Following this giveaway, we will have, we'll take a couple minute break. We'll be back and we're going to talk about uh, the ROG line of oh, motherboards. Yeah. And if you thought some of this stuff was cool, just wait till you see ROG. Right, we've got uh, demos on Keybot, Supreme FX, and then we're going to take a look at the Tough Series and the Workstation Series. That'll yep. round up. And that'll round uh, out our, our, that'll our, round up our very short Bonanza. stream. Our yeah. very <laughs> short stream for this uh, Thursday afternoon. So here's how you're going to win this board it's completely random. Um, Ken, the answer is going to be the character that he just talked about respecking. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. So if you were paying attention, uh, you saw that JJ had brought up uh, Marvel, Marvel Heroes as the game he wanted to play, and he talked about respecking a character. And all you have to do to enter this is say in the chat room one time the name of the character that he wanted to respec. And now the chat room becomes flooded with this name. <laughs> yeah, no, they got it. They got the answer. <laughs> and the benefit to this giveaway system is that Everybody who says that word once, it doesn't matter if it's all caps or all lowercase, uh, gets entered into a database. We have a bot that does it. And then at the end of it, as soon as we're done talking, uh, we will hit a button and we'll randomly select a cool. winner. And then um, somebody write down or keep track of who the winner was. And if you're the winner, uh, I'll have you PM questions with your email address, the user questions in the chat room with your email address. So viewer says hit that button. <laughs> he wants fewer and fewer people entering. So we'll give him just a couple of seconds um, to enter in the name of the character that he wants to respect. Let me find one more question that we can answer before we pick the winner. Which motherboard series will get micro ATX and ITX updates? Okay, that's a that's a great question. So mainstream series, uh, I think we showed it, right? Maybe you want to show it just one more time. Yeah. We've got a, a Z97 i plus, uh, which will be part of the mainstream series. Um, so that is the only mini ITX that we'll have on the mainstream series. There won't be mini ITX 
for Sabretooth or for WS, excuse me, for Tough Series or for WS. For ROG, as you guys traditionally know, we do do a uh, now a Mini ITX. Uh, that won't be initially available at launch, but there will be a new impact-based motherboard that will okay. be coming. Uh, so you can't expect that. For Micro ITX, um, ROG is launching with the Maximus 7 Gene, so that is going to be available. And uh, of course, um, for the Tough Series, we have the Griffin, which uh, we'll be talking about when we get to the Sabretooth Series, which will be a Nylar Micro ATX board. And for mainstream, there is also a Z97 Micro ATX uh, flavor available. So three of our segmentations will have Micro ATX, and two of them will have Mini ITX. All right, we have come to the end of our first entry for the contest. Can hit that button. Chris underscore N M. Chris C H R I S yep. underscore N M. You are the winner of an ASUS Z97A motherboard, courtesy of JJ and our friends at ASUS. Um, yeah, Congrats. Ken has just typed your name in there. So, Chris, if you will send a private message to uh, uh, Ken or questions in the chat room, get your email address in there, and then we'll uh, come back later, follow up with address and all that information. So what we're going to do cool. now is we're going to take a quick break. If you're watching us live, we'll be back. We're going to change out our demo system uh, for the ROG demo system. We'll be back if you're watching these on YouTube after the fact. The next video in the playlist will get into the discussion of the ROG motherboards. We'll be oh, right yeah. back.